Hey, what is up everyone? Professor Danny and Alex. Today, let's look at some basic techniques as well as some more funky ones you can do from the back control. So check it out. We're going to start from the mount position here. And what I want to show is if the person turns to their side, we looked at it in the previous video where we want to use what we call the technical mount position. So if he turns here, I don't want to resist and get stuck and get rolled over, right? So if he's turning to his side, I'm going to give him just enough space and then slide to this position right here. All right, so come back to your side, Alex. So here, this is an attacking position we showed in the previous video. But look, if he keeps on turning to the mat, look, this knee is going to follow and drop to the mat. So now I can seize the mount position. So this is referred to as the back mount, right? This is a great position in jiu-jitsu. You receive four points. But if it was self-defense, it's a great controlling tactics because we know we have strikes here and whatnot. But now we're going to look at submissions. So of course, when he is here, if the person does nothing, you keep the control. If he raises his elbows up, like he postures up, and now it's going to happen, he looks up, right? Now the neck is exposed. So of course, now we know we should be attacking the neck with a forearm here. So we're going to bring our arm across. And this is the matalayon, also known as the rear naked choke. This arm is going to go behind his neck. And we're going to finalize the rear naked choke, right? This is a basic technique. Now we must know that, look, my feet are on the outside. If we turn here. If he posts his knees up now, it's important to keep this balance, right? So you don't want to be just postured up here. So you're keeping the balance here like in a regular mount position. But now if he brings his knees up, look, I want to bring my hooks in and following the opponent, right? So from here, look, it's easy for me to roll him over. What I'm going to do is choose a side. Let's say it's this side here. I'm going to bring my arm in front of his chin, right across the shoulder now. And from here, look, when I reach here, I'm going to roll him over and control. Now, it's important when I keep the control, look, two hooks remain onto his legs. I don't want to fall to the side and having one leg behind him because now he's going to start to escape. If this bottom hook is there, he's going to roll over, see, easily turning. If the top hook is there but the bottom hook isn't, he's going to slide over my leg. So it's important to keep both hooks nice and tight, keep pinching on his hips. And now look, because I have one arm in front here, it's easy to bring the other one underneath, very accessible to trap it and use what we refer to as the seat belt control. This is the seat belt grip right here. So this is another four points. This is a great back control technique. Now from the back control position, we have double unders right here. Sometimes you'll end up in the seat belt position we just discussed. And other times on occasion, you might have both arms on top because the elbows weigh in nice and tight, right? So now it's important to understand that whether position you have, whether it's two on over, two unders like this, or one over top, you always have access to the neck, unless you have two arms trapped, right? But if it were here, for example, now we're going to go for our first technique. See how I just feed this collar? You've done it so many times that you should know exactly where it is, right? So you're holding the collars here. Just give it to one side or to the opposite. But now look, the opposite arm needs to transfer to the other lapel. And now this arm is going to pull this way, and I'm going to drive this down. See? This is the collar choke. See, you feed one to the other, and look. You pull nice and tight. That's the basic collar choke. Now, if I had a seat belt control, this arm is going to feed it to the lapel, go to the opposite side, and do the same technique, right? We talked about these techniques in previous videos, but now I want to look at other options. So for example, maybe we're here, and now I had this grip, and now the arm is stuck. So he's holding nice and tight. So now I can't necessarily reach on this lapel. Maybe my arm is not long enough. He's holding. And now look, I'm going to bring this out and away from him to bring it behind his neck. And from here, use this type of single wing choke instead, right? I'll take my feet out here for the tutorial. Make sure you guys can see. So again, look, controlling one and two. And now I always want to look where I'm choking. Another technique you can use as well. When you're looking for chokes, a lot of times he might bring this arm in the way, you know, you're trying to control. So I'm going to bring my foot over. So maybe I had a nice seat belt control. I'm starting to get my choking technique. Let's say I was from here. And now as I lean into it, look, his arm is in the way. So he brings his arm up. So look, I'm going to pull and use my heel to push this arm down and finalize the choke to take this leg, use this leg and take his arm out of the way. All right, so one more time. Look, maybe I'm working the back control from here. I had a grip on the collar. I'm controlling him. But this arm is there. I'm going to use my foot and hook it to remove this and put it behind his back. So here we are. Look, working for the choke. Doesn't matter which choke you're working. And look, use your foot and just loop it. See, bring it over and behind him. See, now you're trapping his arm and you can finalize 
the choking techniques you were working for. All right, so the next technique we're going to look at, look, we're going to loop our leg around to catch his arm. But once I get to the choking technique, maybe it's the first technique right here. As I lean into it, boom, look, I bring this across. But now he's going to try to scoot away from me. So he starts to scoot his hips down, boom, and you start to lose the technique. You still have the choking technique, but look, you're trying to access the arm, and maybe it's not there. He keeps it low, or maybe he's trying to remove the hook with your elbow. He pushes the elbow to remove the hook. So now you're going to lose the technique. So what we're going to do, look, we're going to bring this away, bring the elbow in. If you bring his arm up, now it's hard for him to scoot his hips. If his arm is down, he can scoot his hips down and escape from here. What we're going to do is use the single wing tactic to put his arm only in the way. So if I bring this up, even if it's not behind his head, because the elbow is up now, it's going to be difficult for him to start moving this way. Plus, he doesn't have his hand to bring this foot to the mat. All right. So instead now, look, as I start to pull this choke, I'll pull him into my lap. And now look, I'll bring this leg over to here, start to push and press with my foot against, right? Sometimes from this technique also, you also start to lose the grip. So you're working here, look, the grip is not as tight as the first one, so now you start to lose here. Maybe he uses this hand and starts to loosen, he's starting to pull this a little bit. So you're losing the position. So now what you're gonna do is pull, and look, you're gonna bring this over, and look, start to press, and press against his chest. Boom, to finalize the choke. So you're gonna get that single wing effect, but modify a little bit. So the point is, every time you're attacking the neck, you want to keep him steady, you want to pin him, that way they can start to work the collar around the neck to cut the breathing and the circulation. Okay, so the next position, I had Alex behind me, and I was going to go for this next choke because I don't like to choke my own son. So look, he's going to show this one. This is really devastating. So look, he's going for the collar, one. And now he starts to work that single wing position and brings this one over. Look, he can go for the arm first if he wanted to, but what's gonna happen now, maybe I start to pull and I have a little bit tolerance here on the choke. He's gonna bring this leg over the neck from here and pull into the choke. So now he's gonna go for that same choke. As he leans in, he gets that corner grip. And now I'm very tolerant, very resilient fighter trying to resist this choke. So look, almost like a bow and arrow. So now he can't control the pants like a regular bow and arrow because I'm leaning onto his leg and he didn't get that pant grip just first. But look, he's going to use the momentum of this leg to bring it over the neck and from here, push into the collar choke. We're going to look at that same technique we just did previously. Look, he goes for the collar, he leans in, but now he brings the lap over. What happens here, as he brings this up, maybe I take the arm out. Boom, I'm able to escape. And look, the transfer, he pushes his leg down, boom, into an arm bar. So once again, he goes for the neck. Now he goes for that leg over. He steps over for the choke. This is very tough, right? But maybe I'm able to free myself by pulling his grip away. Look, he push kicks and now lands right into the regular arm bar. You have the back control position here, but look, a lot of times the arm that's free, not this one because I have the underhook here. But this one here, very able to reach my feet. This one here, if he goes for my foot, his armpit, right? I'm stuck. So that underhook blocks that range of motion. But on this side, nothing stops this arm from working. So a lot of times, he's going to use that free arm to start to peel it off. And look, you're going to trap his arm right to here. Seize that wrist. Now what I need to do, sometimes I use it with the seat belt, or you can also raise the chin and start threatening the neck. This is a great grip for choking, but also for controlling. So I'm going to use this and push him down. I'm going to take my lap, pull him away from me. And now look, this leg is going to come across and I'm going to replace it with this grip. And now look, post to the mat. And now I use my foot to shrimp myself away from him. And now he falls right into the triangle choke, which I'll lock from here. And now look, bring the arm tight, raise your stomach, lift your hips into the choke, or sometimes you lean back and from here, push the head. Okay, so one more time. Look, he removes the hook, and now look, he trap his arm. Now I'll do it from this angle. What's going to happen? I like to use the collar to control. You make like a rope here, and I'll use your foot and push him downwards. Slide him down. Now look, you're going to release the grip. So this one's going to let go of the collar, but as I post my foot down, I use my lap to sink him in, but look, this leg is going to come across his chest. Now use this arm, trap your own leg here. So this is just like a seat belt, right? Using your shin. And now look, take your foot, post up, 
and now sink the triangle choke. Bring your foot around his waist, and now you can raise off the mat, one, or lean into it and press the head down. All right, guys, so there you have it. Basic and advanced submission techniques you can use from the back. Hope you enjoyed this content. Leave us a thumbs up. If you are new, make sure to subscribe. We'll see you next video. Take care.